Well, welcome to our summer technology tune-up. Today, we're going to be talking about PowerPoint. This is brought to you by SCORE of Minnesota. Let's start by uh, just giving a little overview of what is SCORE. Of course, it's a, a nationwide nonprofit organization that's sponsored by the Small Business Administration, the SBA. We provide free mentoring and educational services the Minnesota chapter has nearly 90 volunteers serving Manatee and Sarasota counties, and we have been doing that for nearly 50 years. Our chapter was recently designated as a Diamond Chapter of Excellence, which is the highest award that we can receive. Since its founding in 64, SCORE has assisted over 11 million clients and small businesses, and maybe we can even help yours. We help in all phases of a business development from pre-startups. And very often the majority of my clients are pre-startups where they have an idea and they want to bounce this idea off and get some help in uh, funding or finding attorneys or so many uh, ways. Or in opening a business, they've done all of their research and they've decided to open one where they're in, in business and they want to grow it or they're in the selling or closing, exiting business. And we have a team dedicated to that specifically. If you want to apply for a mentor, just go to our website at minnesota.score.org. There you can request a mentor, find a workshop or webinar. In fact, you may have found this webinar there. You can find some live podcasts that might be of interest. And lastly, you can just look at uh, our libraries and uh, see what other resources we have available to you. So who pays the bills for this? Well, the SBA does pay our rent, but we need to find sponsors and community partners. And these are the partners who help us keep the lights on. So a little bit about me, uh, again, I'm Diane McKeever, uh, sometimes referred to as a CPP, that's a certified patient person. That's a title that was given to me by, uh, by some of the 100,000 participants that I worked with in the United States and Europe. I owned a train, software training business for over 30 years, so this is what I did every day, all day. About 20 years ago, I added a website design business because I enjoy graphic design, and 10 years ago, I became a social media professional. I am very proud to be a certified SCORE mentor, and I specialize in web design and social media, and I'm also the education chair. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, of course, we're going to talk about PowerPoint. We'll start with an overview. If you were in the previous sessions, you know that I always start by uh, giving you a little uh, layout and understanding what's going on on the screen and some terms that I'm going to be using. But we're going to be, of course, creating and formatting slides. And we're going to be editing the master slides. Master slides are very important and a lot of people aren't even aware of them. We're gonna be working with graphics because we're going to need to bring in graphics, of course, pictures, um, logos. We need to insert them and resize them and do it correctly. We're going to be working with animations and transitions, reviewing the eight object types. You may only have six object types. It really depends upon the version that you're working with. Uh, I am working with the Office 365, which is the uh, most current version, and it's kept up to date all the time. So it's a subscription-based service. And other fun tips as we go along. So a uh, couple of things that you should be aware of. I really encourage you to take notes. This video is going to be sent to you probably in the next day or so. And you'll be able to review it, and that's helpful. But it's always a good idea to have your own notes. There are some things I'll try and point out. You should be taking a note about this. Uh, tip card is going to be mailed to you that will have some uh, important notes on it that you should have taken, perhaps. My book, 100 Amazing Computer Tips, is available on Amazon. And I'm a resource. You can always email me. My SCORE email address is diane.mckeever at scorevolunteer.org. So let's get started. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment. 
and I am going to uh, start sharing it again. Share screen. Okay, so I'm going to create a new presentation. So when you open up PowerPoint, this is what you would be seeing. Various new themes, uh, themes that you may have used recently or themes that you may have developed. You can see I actually have a score theme and whenever I'm going to create a new score presentation, I open it. There are all kinds of themes down here uh, that you can use. Again, your themes may differ from mine. You may not have as many as I do. It really depends upon the version of the program. But we're gonna start with a blank presentation. So when you uh, create a new presentation, you're presented with one slide, which is helpful because you wouldn't know what else is going on. But you can see that the screen is divided into at least two parts. You can see over here on the left, this is a little thumbnail of the slide. In the center of your screen, of course, we have the slide itself that we'll be working on. When I give you directions, I'm always going to include the name of the tab. Do you see that right now I'm working on the home tab? I've made my mouse very large and yellow. I hope it's helpful to you. We're working on the home tab. And uh, when I say that we'll be doing something, going to an action, I'll tell you on what tab, in what group. You can see this is the undo group and the clipboard group and the slide group and so forth. So that's the tab, this is the group, and then finally there will be an option. So if we're going to be inserting a shape here, I would say on the home tab in the drawing group, we'll click on shapes and insert a shape. So we'll uh, continue on. Now, you can see that on our slide, it says click to add title and click to add subtitle. Both of these are called placeholders. And not only do they hold a place or a spot on your screen, but they also hold a format. When I click in this title placeholder, you can see that the font that I'm working with is Calibri Light. And so when I start typing, we'll say finding a mentor. That perhaps will be our topic. I don't have to enter that. I typed it. It's there. If I wanted to add a subtitle, often a subtitle would be presented by... or it could be um, a slogan perhaps for your presentation. If you don't like the alignment of this, if you don't like the color of it, if you don't like the font, just hang in for a little bit because we're going to be visiting the master. <laughs> yes, the master, or at least the PowerPoint slide master. And it, it's there that we're going to make global changes. It's there that we'll be putting our logo and so forth to personalize this. We now want a new slide, so we're on the home tab. You can see that in the slide group, it says new slide. There's two options for this. I could click right on the picture where my pointer is, and that would automatically give me a new slide. Or if I knew that I wanted a slide with a particular layout, I could click on the down arrow on the bottom of this box, and I would see the various types of layouts that are available to me. For now, I'm just going to click on the new slide button and I then get a new slide. You can see that when I hover, it actually tells me that I could do this as a keyboard shortcut, right? That I could hold down the control key and type the letter M and that would get me a new slide. Uh, M doesn't, doesn't uh, I can't give you a hook for, for remembering that, uh, but that's the keyboard shortcut for it. So you're given a new slide and the first slide always comes in as a title slide because the assumption is that your first slide will have just a title on it. The second slide, if you just click on the new slide button as we did, will come in with a title placeholder and a content placeholder. So let's put in a title. All right, and then I'll click in the content box. Now they call this the content box. Most people just think of it as being the text box where you would be typing your bullets. 
And while that's true, you can also see that we have, or at least I have, eight other icons here. So this particular box is capable of housing one of eight different options. For the moment, we're going to work with the text. So uh, you can see that I automatically have a bullet as I'm in here. Uh, so I'm going to be typing the first, the first item. So to find a mentor, first you have to request one. And when I hit the enter key, again, I get another bullet. You see how gray it is because if I don't use it, it actually will not print. Now you'll notice that I'm not writing in sentences. It is not recommended that the bullets that you put into your document are written in sentences. So as a result, they really carry no punctuation because they're not a sentence. But it's not good form for you to be writing in sentences and then reading it out for the participants. That actually is a fairly boring presentation. I'm sure you've been to at least one in your life and have found it to be pretty tedious. Uh, so again, we're just typing our little bullets and I'm hitting the enter key. Now under discuss business, I want to put in some sub uh, bullets on this. I could go up to the home tab in the paragraph group and I could click on this, which is the increased list level button. But instead of doing that, I'd like to keep my fingers on the keyboard. It's much more efficient. I'm going to hit the tab key on my keyboard. And do you see that when I hit the tab key, it indents this. There are five levels of, indent, of indenting, and this is now the second level that I'm at. So I'm going to put in what type of a business is it? Um, where, who is your audience? And where is your funding coming from? All right, I'm going to hit the enter key again. Well, I only have three sub bullets to put there and I'd like to put another primary bullet. So how can I get back to the left side? Again, I have two options for doing that from the home tab, I can go to the paragraph group and now I have an option to decrease the list level. I could click on this and the bullet would go back to, oops, I missed it. Uh, and the bullet do you see has gone back to the left. I'm going to move it back to the right again because I want to show you that if I hold down the shift key on my keyboard and hit the tab, it's a shift tab, it's a backward tab. In fact, have you ever noticed that the tab key often has two arrows on it, but you've only been successful in getting it to go in one direction. Well, if you wanted to go back and this, holds true actually in so many places on your computer. If you wanna go backwards through a tab, you would hold down the shift key and hit the tab key. Okay, and so um, we'll say open business. Good, all right. Uh, it would be a good idea here for us to save this. I'm not actually going to be saving this as we go along, but I like the idea of just hitting the save button after you have finished a slide. You have to sit back anyway and think about what the next slide is going to be. Now, I don't want you to focus too much on what the next slide is going to be. I always find that it's better to put together a presentation by thinking about all of the slides that you want to have in it, and then later put it into some kind of a logical order. Uh, that I think is a more creative process than focusing on, let me see, this is the steps for finding a mentor. Well, uh, what would the next step be? Well, just focus on what you want to tell people and it will come, it will flow. So again, I'm going to click on the new slide button. All right, uh, mentoring process. It's a good idea to set up early uh, the, the format for your titles, are they going to be all caps? In this case, I have all the primary words capitalized, uh, or are they going to be all upper lowercase? Do it early, uh, come up with a form for it, and then it makes it much easier to work with. We're gonna look at some of the options that are available to us. Um, 
right now, I'm just going to hover above each of these and you'll see that, well, come on, uh, this says insert a table. That's kind of a, an Excel type table with uh, boxes for you to uh, put information in. We'll use that in a moment. This is a chart. We have smart art graphics. This last one on the, the on the first row may not be available to you. It's called 3D models. This is something that Microsoft has added in the last few years. On the bottom row, we have insert a picture, insert images. This is um, more clip art and insert a video. So a video can be inserted using this icon. And lastly, this is inserting icons. Uh, this is a new one too, and you may not have that available to you. I think right now though, I'd like to use this smart art. So I'm going to click on insert smart art graphic and it opens a window and it shows me all of the types of smart art that are available to me. I could have lists of things. I could show a process, you know, that you're starting with one item and then going on to the next and the next, a cycle, hierarchy. This would be useful for an organization chart. So I would encourage you to look at some of these options. Some are available with pictures. Do you see this category as pictures? And that means that any of these you have an opportunity to insert pictures along with text. I'm going to go back to list and I will choose a simple list. Let's go with this guy and okay. And so I now have a, a list uh, where I have it all set up and all I need to do is add the text to it. So if I click in the box, I can add text here. Um, we'll say that we start and then we'll say um, move forward. Okay, oh, but I wanted more than that. Well, if I wanted more than that, I have a, uh, a series of options because I'm in smart art. I actually have a smart art design tab that appeared and this is allowing me to um, move forward with this. If I click on this little uh, option, do you see that there's a little, hmm, not quite a triangle, but a, a left facing arrow. If I click here, it allows me to type information in this box. So whether you type information in this box or whether you type information on your uh, screen, it doesn't really make any difference. If I didn't want these boxes, if I just wanted to say start, I can, I'm backspacing to remove these. Okay, and if I hit the enter key, do you see because my mouse was on that primary level, I get a third box, move forward, um, get customers, and be a success. So I could continue doing this. And sometimes it's uh, more pleasing to have a, a, something like smart art as opposed to just having a list. Uh, when I click on this smart art again, I can go back to my smart art design. There's all kinds of uh, options relative to that. Um, if I click the down arrow, do you see that I could change some of the options on here? And I can also change the colors. If this is not my color scheme, I can go in with a whole different color scheme. And if I don't like this layout, this whole process, I can choose a completely different smart art. And all of my text is retained. There we go. Maybe that's a better um, process in order to uh, show what it is that I'm looking at. So it's, it's uh, an option that's available to you and it can make your presentation look a little bit more attractive. Okay, I'm just bringing in the side. And actually, did you see that when I brought in the side, both the left and the right sides came in and that's because I'm holding down the control key. When I'm resizing something and I hold down the control key, 
it actually resizes it from the center. In this case, because I'm using a side handle, it's moving not only the right side, but the left side. And that's particularly helpful, isn't it? Here's our four headed arrow. If you were here with me last week for Excel, we talked about this pointer with a four headed arrow. Whenever you see that, it's always moving. So if I wanted to move this, whoops, I didn't want to move just that. Let me undo that. Mm -mm -mm. Being obstinate today, are you? You have to do it in one fell swoop. Hmm. Well, I'll use my arrow keys. When in doubt, use your arrow keys. All right, let's go on to another new slide. And we'll look at the financing. That's going to be in a table. So I'll click on the insert table and it asks me how many columns <clears throat> and how many rows. Really the most important thing here is how many columns. So you should have some idea as to what you're going to be putting in and then the number of columns. Number of rows you'll see is not all that important. I'm going to click on okay. And it gave me the three columns and the two rows that I had asked for. My cursor is in the first box. So I'll put in categories and 2020 and 2021. Okay, so maybe the first category is where are we going to get financing? Maybe even the SBA. And maybe last year they gave us $500. And maybe this year we're going to take out a $2,000 loan. Now you see, I've asked for two rows. So I filled up all of my rows and now I'm in a pickle. Now I need to <clears throat> figure out what to do. And of course it is the tab key. If you've used uh, tables in Word, you found out that the tab key in the last cell, if you're in the last cell as I am, and you hit the tab key once, you'll get a whole nother row. So we're also going to look at the bank and the bank gave us 250 last year and maybe this year we'll ask for a thousand and hit the tab key and we'll uh, go to the loan, uh, loan shark. How about the loan shark, okay? He's gonna, he gave us a thousand last year and only 25 this year. So we can continue on. Um, Similar to what we talked about last week in Excel, I can change the width of these columns. Do you see where my mouse is on the vertical line? Anywhere on the vertical line, it doesn't have to be at the top. If I hold down my mouse button and drag, I can change the width of the columns. So I'll do that. And again, whoops, missed it. It gets tricky here sometimes. So I can change the width of my columns. I might also want to change the alignment. Perhaps I'd like to have these align centered <clears throat> and the numbers align right. Alignment is always on the home tab. Uh, sometimes you'll get a <clears throat> menu that pops up. Excuse me. <clears throat> sometimes you'll see a menu pop up that will allow you to uh, do it in cell, but it's always on the home tab. So I'm going to select some of my numbers and change the alignment. This looks great, but I want to move the whole thing. So remember, I'm looking for that pointer with a four headed arrow. For the most part, if you're right at the very outer edge, you'll find it pretty quickly. <clears throat> so we're finished with this slide. Again, I would save it. Now, at some point, I might say, all right, well, I'm, I'm, I'm finished working or I'm, I'm happy with where I am and I haven't thought about what my next slide is going to be. So maybe it's time to go into the master and make some changes that will affect all of the slides. Well, where would this master be? It's from the view menu. I want to view the master. So it's from the view menu and here's the master views. We have a slide master, a handout master, and a note master. I'm going to look at the slide master. When I click on it, it brings up a list of all of the slide templates or masters that there are. 
you can see that number one, this is our primary master and all of the others are sort of slaves to it. And so as a result, if I wanted something that affected all of the slides, I would go to this. And now if I wanted to put in a logo, let's say, I'm going to insert a picture from my device. And let's see what I have. Oops, not that. This one. I'm involved with a sailboat race, and so I've got a lot of great pictures that we could use. And I'm going to insert this logo. Now, a couple of things. One is that this logo is fairly large. Well, of course, I can resize that, and I will resize that in just a moment. But do you see that there's a lot of white space on either side? It's not going to be a problem for us in this case, but it might be a problem if things got tight. So I think I'd like to crop off this white space. Because I have a picture selected, the picture format tab is here. If I didn't have the picture selected, if I clicked away from it, do you see how it disappears? I'm going to click on it and the picture format tab is back again. And crop is one of my options. I'm going to click on it and I get some cropping handles. So this is particularly helpful if you had a picture and maybe there was somebody in it and you didn't want that person there rather than going into a graphic program to fix that, you can just crop it. So I was able to crop this and now I'm going to resize it. Now in talking about resizing, and we'll say this more than once, you never resize using these side handles when you're resizing a picture. You can resize a text box using those side handles if you want, but never a picture, because when you use the side handles and resize a picture, do you see what happens to it? It becomes distorted. So it's never a good idea to do that. It's always a good idea to undo. And remember where the undo is. I always use the keyboard shortcut, but the undo is actually um, right up on your top toolbar, undo. I always remember undo is control Z, Z. Okay, I'm going to resize this. I'm going to use a corner handle and you see how as I'm resizing, it's coming down. I have to actually drag my mouse diagonally because do you see that it's showing me I need to drag in that direction diagonally, either down or up, depending upon whether I want to make something smaller or larger. And now I'm looking for my pointer with a four headed arrow and I'll move this off to the side. So that's gonna be now on every slide. I can also make other changes, like I don't uh, like the font perhaps on this. This is Calibri Light, and I would like to change that to something with a little bit more emphasis. So I'm, instead of Calibri Light, I'm going to click on the down arrow, and you probably don't have nearly as many fonts as I have because I love fonts. Uh, I'm going to make that change. So I made it uh, to Ariel Black, and I think I'd like to make all of these Ariel as well. Not Ariel Black, but just plain Ariel. I don't want them to be too strong, but a little bit stronger than they were. All right, and this bullet, I don't particularly like this bullet. It's it, looks very boring to me. So I'm going to change it uh, from the home tab in the paragraph group. You can see that this is the bullets. And when I click on it, there are some predefined bullets and I could go with one of those. I particularly like these uh, check marks. So I'm going to click on that. And now instead of the dot that was there, I have a check mark. I could also go into this bullets and numbering if I wanted, and I could change the color of that check mark. If I had a color scheme going here, let's make it so that we can really see it stand out. Okay, that, now it's green. So that's on the master that it's green, right? So we're gonna close the master. I'm going to go to the view, and I'm going to go back to normal. So from the view tab, presentation views, I'm going to go back to normal. And if I go to a slide that has bullets on it, you can see that a couple of things have happened, right? 
Our title has become Ariel Black, and now we have green bullets for all of our primary um, items. All right, I'm going to click below slide four in my uh, slide uh, thumbnail area. Oh, I also wanted to point out that on each of our slides, can you see in the thumbnail, we've got that logo on them. You're not gonna be able to click on this logo uh, because it isn't here, right? It's on the piece of paper in effect. It's been put onto the master. And so if you wanted to remove that, you would have to go to the master. There actually is a way, uh, I don't wanna go there today, but it is a way under design that you could go to the background and you could say, hide all the master elements and it would hide all the master page elements. The reason I wanted to click on slide four or click below slide four is that when I click on new slide, if I were to be looking at slide two and I clicked on new slide, I would actually get a new slide three. The assumption is that if I clicked on slide two or I was looking at slide two and I asked for a new slide, I probably wanted it after that. That may or may not have been the case, but that's where it came in. And for, mo for the moment, that's fine because we're going to want to move that around in a little bit. So I am going to put in a title and I'd like to add a picture. And I'm going to click on the picture icon. And I think I'll add this boat. This is a pretty boat, black diamond. All right. If I wanted to resize this picture, remember, never ever do I want to use these side handles because it gets out of proportion. So I'm going to undo that. If I want to make it larger, I can do that, I can drag from the edge and I can make it larger or smaller. Again, I'm going to undo. Because when I inserted this picture, a couple of things, let me delete this because I want to reinforce this. When I inserted the picture, I did so by using this icon. And the reason that I want to do that is because I want it to be a content I want it to be contained in this text, what people refer to as a text box. It's a content box. Uh, the reason that I want to do that is that you see how it brought the picture in and it automatically resized it. If I just go to the insert and picture, it's going to bring in a picture that I identify, but it will bring it in in any particular size. By using the content, it brings it in in a size that fits into the content. I'm going to resize it. Now, you know that we talked about these corner handles, but here's a trick. If I hold down the control key and drag, it resizes the picture from the center. Now, that's particularly helpful if you have an object that you've put in and it's in the center of the slide, left to right, top to bottom, whatever center, you, it's well positioned, I should say. And all you want to do is make it larger or smaller. You don't really want to change its position. Um, I would use uh, the corner handles, of course, but I would hold down the control key because the control key allows me to resize it in place. If I don't hold down the control key, I can resize it, but do you see that it's just resizing these two sides of the picture and therefore the picture itself is no longer centered on the slide. So again, I'm going to undo that. I can make it as large or as small as I want. Now, suppose I decided that, oh, I'd like to have a second picture on here. I could, again, go to the insert and picture and insert a picture directly, but I'd like to change the layout. I know that there is a layout that would allow me to have two content. So I'm going to click on it and it changes the layout of the slide. So it's now showing me and it's resized to this original picture. So that this picture fits in the content. And I'm going to click on this to insert another picture. I'll choose another kind of horizontal picture. And it comes in and these two pictures now have come in and they are in fact the same height, uh, perhaps not the same width because it has to uh, fit into the aspect ratio. But the assumption is that you really wanted the same height for them. 
And that's true. This is great. This is exactly what I'd like. Now, I can move these around as well. I don't know if you can see this very clearly, but as I move this picture to the left, there's a vertical line that appears. Now, this is only on the more current version of PowerPoint. So if you don't get this, it's because you don't have the current version. As I'm moving objects around, PowerPoint is helping me, trying to help me identify a, a good placement for them. Uh, if I move this up higher, then the picture on the left and then come down slowly, it will tell me when these two pictures are in alignment. If you don't have a version of the program that has that, another way is that you can actually ask um, PowerPoint to kind of help you do this. I need to select both of these pictures at the same time. And then I'm going to ask that the tops of the pictures be aligned. So I'm going to click on one picture, it doesn't matter which one I start with, and I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and click on the second picture. This then allows me to go into my picture format and there's an arrange group here over on the right. And I'm going to choose align and align tops. So it has moved both of them up since they're both selected. I'm using my little arrow keys to move them down, but I know that they are perfectly aligned. Now I might like to have another shape maybe in between. I'm going to insert a little rectangle just as kind of a, a graphic element. Okay, that's great. Oh, but I'd like that to be centered between these two pictures. And the way that I do that is, I'm going to click on this picture. What would I hold down on my keyboard? Do I hear you all say the shift key? Ah, very good. If I click on, if I hold down the shift key and click on the second and the third, I can have as many objects selected as I want. And then again, I'm going to go to the picture format and align. And I think I'd like to align the, the uh, I always get this one confused, align the middles of them. Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. So this middle object is equidistant from the top and the bottom of the objects to its left and right. But I'd like it to be distributed, distribute horizontally. Now what that's going to do, the left and right pictures are not going to move, but any objects that I have in the center, whether it's one as we have here, two, three, it doesn't matter what it is. If I say distribute it horizontally, now this is equidistant left and right and top and bottom from the pictures. So that alignment, uh, check it out. It really is very helpful. All right, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to be adding uh, a little animation and um, transitions. Uh, since we're working on this, uh, let's add the animations to this. So I'm going to click on this first picture and I'll say that I want that to appear. And I'll click on this box and say, I want that to float in. And on this picture, I would like it to fly in. Now, as I choose each of these, there's actually uh, effect options where I can say, where should it be flying in? I think I'd like this to fly in from the right. And I would like this to float in from the top. And this, I would like it to appear. Well, there is no effect option because it's just going to appear. Let's see if I choose fade. Okay. So I have a little one, two, and three, which tells me that if I look at this, if I'm in my presentation, the word participants is going to be there automatically. That does not have an animation associated with it because it has no number. When I click my mouse, black diamond will come in. When I click my mouse, the box will come in. And when I click my mouse, Charlotte will come in. Now, how can I see that? Across the bottom of my screen, I have to kind of look around. Um, I can uh, go into the slideshow from this slide. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on slideshow. 
And you see, as I said, participants is there. I click, here comes Black Diamond. Click, here comes the box and click, here comes Charlotte. All right, so I'm escaping and that is no longer, uh, I'm no longer in that slideshow. It's a little trickier when you want to do animation to uh, things like smart art, because when I ask it to fly in, do you see that it's going to fly in as one unit? And I know that because it says the number one. The way that, uh, the easiest way, I think, to change this is go to your animation pane. And when you click on it, you now have an animation pane that appears over on the right side of your screen. This is going to give you some controls. If I click the down arrow, I could have it start with previous on a mouse click, whatever it is. But what I'm really aiming for is this effect options because under effect options, it's also going to reinforce where is it coming from? Is there a sound associated with it? Please don't play with sound. Oh, we don't need sound. You can be making your own sound. But this is what I'm looking for, which is, of course, only going to be available if we have smart art selected. It's the smart art animation. And the default is that this comes in as one group. But I would actually like it to be by level. By level one by one. OK, by level one by one. There we go. So it looks like. Uh, you have to talk quickly, right? That this is coming in uh, uh, automatically and it's just floating in like that. But the reality is that if I go into my slideshow again, I clicked on the little slideshow in the lower right corner, this is how it's going to be. The mentoring process, I click, I have an opportunity to talk about start, da, 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 da. When I click again, the next item comes up, the next item comes up. And the next item. So this is on a click. Everything is advancing on a click. And that's exactly the way you'd like it to be. And it's very reassuring to have these little numbers. All right, the other thing that we might like to add to our slideshow is transitions. A transition is how each slide is going to, uh, how we're going to change from one slide to another. And some of these are pretty. Uh, simple and look lovely. Fade to black, push a slide up. So it is demonstrating what that would look like. You probably don't want to have a uh, too exciting one on every slide uh, because it gets kind of tedious after a while. You can choose an animation for each slide, uh, a, a transition, I should say, for each slide or you can choose a transition that you like and then say, apply to all. You'll notice also that there is a duration. So this is one second. If I were to increase that number, it would do it slower or decrease it. It would do it faster. So once I choose a, um, a transition and you can see that we have many, again, not all of these are going to be available to you. Uh, because this is the latest version of the program. I was just laughing at Fracture. Can you imagine seeing that for every slide? I think that would get kind of tedious and you'd expect it to have a noise going with it, wouldn't you? What would an airplane look like? Okay, mm -hmm. so we can apply it to all. And again, if I go into my slideshow, as I'm changing from one slide to the next, and here's the um, animation that we were talking about. Another animation. This one didn't have an animation and we're out. That's the end of our slideshow. All right, I wanted to show you one other thing. So often uh, you're trying to bring in a lot of pictures. Uh, I know that my mother is having 101 birthday next month, and you can bet there's probably going to be a PowerPoint presentation running somewhere with pictures from her first 101 years. 
um, it's very tedious bringing in a lot of pictures. So one way of doing it is by going to the insert tab and insert a photo album. Now, what this is going to do is actually going to create uh, a new slideshow, a new file, and I'm gonna be able to copy and paste the picture. So I'm going to insert the pictures from a disc and I'm going to identify the pictures. If I hover above one, it becomes blue. And that means that that's selected. If I hold down the control key on my keyboard, I'm going to be able to select as many pictures as I want. So for now, this will be fine. I could bring in many, many more, but that's all we need for the moment. Um, do I want a text box on there? Do I want the pictures to be all black and white? And all of this, the pictures are going to fit to the slide. So there are other options here that you can explore. But when I click on create, it has actually created a whole new presentation with each picture being on a slide unto itself. One thing that I could do is I could select this group of slides. Now I'm going to select from slide two all the way down to slide eight. And I do that by clicking on slide two. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click on slide eight. And that's a fast way of selecting all of them. When I hold down the shift key, when I click on the first and hold down the shift key and click on the last, it will select all in between. So all of these are selected. I'm going to copy them. And I'm actually going to close this presentation and not save it. Do you see that my cursor is below the fifth slide? And I'm going to paste here. And so now all of these slides are in this presentation. All right. Any questions? Well, I saw where someone had asked how I started the presentation. It's really just opening up PowerPoint. And when you ask for a new presentation, this is exactly what you get. You would be able to choose any of these themes and just OK it. And you're in your presentation and you're off and running. All right, if you have any other questions, just uh, list them and I will be happy to ask them. So you may find that this whole presentation looks a little boring. You'd like to make it look a little more exciting. That's our design. You can see that PowerPoint Microsoft has given us quite a few uh, templates. And if you like any of these, you can click on them. Uh, you can also browse for themes. Uh, you can go on the internet and put in PowerPoint themes and you'll see that there are many themes available. Some are free, some you'll have to pay for. But when you, you click on any of them, they have taken over the master, as you can imagine, right? And they have now uh, applied, been applied. Oh, look here. This is a situation, isn't it? This picture has become resized. So I'm going to try and resize it now. If I don't have these helpful handles that tell me uh, in this version of the program that tell me when this is the same size, another way that I can do it is if I click on this picture and I say, well, that has a good height and I want this picture to have the same height, I can click on it and go to picture format and under picture format, I can note the height. The height of this is 4.76. And if I click on this picture, I can see it is not 4.76. So I've clicked in the box and I'm going to type 4.76 and enter. And now these two pictures are exactly the same height. I'm going to use my alignment tools. I'm going to align the tops this time. And I'm going back into alignment and distribute horizontally. And you see the only one that moves there is the middle one because that is the one that needed to be uh, aligned differently. Okay, any other questions? Well, I think we're uh, just about out of time and just reviewing uh, some of the things that I wanted to, to do with you. And I, I think I have uh, covered all of the topics. 
I hope you learned a few things and that this was a, a valuable use of your time. Um, I have one more slide that I need to show. Nope, this isn't it. That wasn't it. It is this. And let me go down here. And I want to thank you for coming. I want to thank you for participating. Next week, we're going to be talking about Gmail. And if you think you know everything about Gmail, come on, sign up and uh, see if, in fact, that's true. Uh, you're going to be getting a survey. And please um, help us with a survey. Uh, 10 is good and one is not. So uh, rate me or rate the presentation uh, what you think is appropriate. Uh, and also, if you could indicate how we can improve our, our webinars and other, other topics that we should be covering, topics that you have um, interest in, and uh, if there's enough interest or we think they're um, something that uh, people would benefit from, we'd be happy to put those on. If you have someone who is interested in a SCORE mentor, please tell them about minnesota.score.org, our website, and that they can sign up there. So thank you all for coming. And I, uh, I hope that you found this to be valuable. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.